And we all understand that to be a leader, you must be an example. But I'm talking more about just being an example in appearance or professionalism. Yes, it's important to, to dress properly. It's important to have yourself groomed properly, to keep yourself in good shape and all those other type of things. Yes, that is important, but that's not the kind of example that I'm talking about when you're in a leadership role. The example I'm talking about falls into two categories. The first one is an example that you project by inconveniencing yourself when you do not have to. Because of your position and your authority, you don't have to do this. You can get away with it, so to speak, if you do not desire to. And there'll be no consequences to you. But you ought to do it because you know it's the right thing to do. The second one category is when you take risk as a leader, willingly take risk that, once again, you're not required to do because of the position you're in. But you feel as though, if I'm going to ask this of the people that work for me, I will show them that I'm willing to take the same risk. In order to illustrate some of these characteristics, I like to tell stories about my experience in the Air Force. And I need to caveat these by up front saying, the purpose of telling you this story is not to impress you with what a great leader I was, because as a matter of fact, I've got a few stories out there that are not so complimentary of my leadership skills. And I'll tell those too. I know you can't wait for those. <laughs> However, I do find that by telling a story, it's a lot easier to illustrate the point I'm trying to make. And so that will be my purpose, just to illustrate the point. For example, with regards to convenience, I took a wing of uh, aircraft and individuals about 1,500 to the desert back in the middle 90s to prove a concept called the Expeditionary Air Force. It was our first deployment, and we were going to show that the Air Force could get essentially almost a no-notice tasking and within 24 hours launch our, our, our aircraft, land in a foreign country, in a bare base situation where all we really were provided um, was a runway, and then operate a combat mission within 24 hours, or within 12 hours of landing, and then be able to continuously sustain ourselves for three, four months. We went to Jordan. We landed at one of their air bases called Azraq, and we lived out in a desolated desert part of the base. But when we arrived on the first day, I was met by the commander of the, of the Jordanian Air Force, the commander of the base, and a host of other dignitaries. And after we had had a chance to get to know one another and, and have a little bit of a social, the base commander came up to me and said, now, General Looney, I know that they're going to be putting tents up. As a matter of fact, they've already started putting the tents up and that you will be living in a tent. But, sir, you are the commander. We do not want you to live in a tent. We have set aside a nice house with air conditioning. It's fully furnished. Uh, we'll make sure that, uh, we'll, that you'll have a couple of servants that will keep it clean and take care of you and all the rest of this. And I thought about that for a second, you know, and there was a little voice that said, wow, hmm, man. <laughs> this isn't going to be so bad after all. <laughs> but then there was another little voice that said, hey, wait a minute. You're the commander. How can you possibly go live in a nice air-conditioned house with running uh, uh, hot and cold servants and all those other type of things while all of your airmen are in tents out in the middle of the desert dealing with the inconveniences? And so I quite, quietly decline, or, or quickly declined, courteously declined this offer, and I went and lived in Tent City with my airmen. And in the morning, I would go to the shower tent with them, and I would shower alongside them, and I would shave alongside them, and I went to all my meals at the dining hall with them, and I slept in my tent, and when the sandstorm came, I was covered with dust just like they were. And they knew it. And they knew it. They would have also known if I were over in that sweet air-conditioned house thinking, man, it sucks to be you. 